I'm fascinated with contemporary cities that offer new mobility service. Some of them are such a beautiful <laughs> mess <laughs> because they offer new mobility service. If you've been to Paris or San Francisco, this is not something you pick up. This is something you step over. For a long time, cities have had full control of the transportation systems. Government bodies put processes in place to control mobility. But in the last few years, new mobility services have been integrated into the ecosystem, and it's disrupted everything. Because, let's be honest, it was not implemented that well. I'm a mother, and I think that all parents here today would agree. This brand of chaos is a little bit like parenting. As parents, you know that it's important to allow your kids to have access to information and to adapt to a modern world, or they will be left behind. But if you don't keep it under control and monitor the usage, the benefits might turn from positive to unbearably negative. I have the pleasure of having my kids in the audience today. It is the first time that they've come to watch Mama's speech, and they are probably willing to kill me right now for mentioning them. <laughs> How many of you are parents here today? Raise your hands, please. Good. How good are they arguing and insisting when they want something? Many politicians, right? But my kids are not the smiley, calm Obama version. They are more like a political version of Dr. Phil after being conflicted on his show. <laughs> I shouldn't say anything else, or they would be so embarrassed. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should, but just a little bit. They are 10 and 14 years old, typical teenagers trying to test their limits and go the last mile to get what they want. But the truth is, I don't just want to embarrass my kids. I want to engage them too. And I guess mobility isn't that exciting topic for them. So let's do something here now that will entertain them a little more and embarrass them a lot more. <laughs> Let's do an analogy here where cities are parents and operators are crazy, bold teenagers. Now we are ready to discuss why it is so important for cities to have control over operators. Where are my operators? Are you ready, operators? <laughs> Hope that you have fun. <laughs> Technology to optimize mobility service is fundamental. The prediction for the coming years for cities is exciting and terrifying. The proportion of the global population living in urban areas has risen from half in 2000 to 57% now. And it's predicted to reach 70% by 2050. That means that today we have 4.2 billion people huddled together to enjoy all the pleasures that big cities can provide. And that directly affects the way we move from A to B. I mean, we are in Luxembourg today, and for those who actually live or work here, I'm probably preaching to the choir, right? <laughs> the average commuting time in Luxembourg in 2015 was 32 minutes. Can anyone here guess how many minutes you spend on average today? More? Much more? Not that much. Yet, <laughs> yet, 79 minutes, more than double in less than four years. That's insane. And what is interesting about Luxembourg is that the government is desperately looking for mobility alternatives to stop these numbers. But what did Luxembourg Mama Mayor do when Rebel Birds tried to launch their service here? No, 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 no. But why not, Mama? Because I said so. That's what we do, right? But what is happening in Luxembourg is not an isolated case. However, the mobility infrastructure varies a lot depending on the region, and this is quite interesting. When we look at Europe, we have limited roads in urban areas, but often a good public transportation system. When it comes to the US, the infrastructure is created based on private cars with many large roads, but catching public transport can be like acting in waiting for Godot. <laughs> and when it comes to emerging markets, your life's like waiting for Godot. 
I'm Brazilian, so I'm allowed to say it. When I live in Rio, I used to spend an average of three hours per day commuting to work. But this is not just in Brazil. When I moved to Germany, I began working with mobility, and the first markets that I worked with was Manila, the most congested city in the road, and Delhi, the most polluted city in the road. Manila, this is what traffic looks like there. Next level, right? If you're lucky to be in the comfort of a taxi, you're going to sit there and watch things pass by your window. Motorbikes, runners, snails. <laughs> if it wasn't so hot and the air wasn't so polluted, walking would be the best mode of transport, for sure. Delhi, can you imagine commuting to work every day in this chaos? You see more cows than Uber drivers on the road. And trust me, even if you are not religious, if you take a tuk-tuk in India during peak hours, you will be praying to all 330 million Hindu gods <laughs> that you survive the trip. <laughs> I love urban chaos. McDonald's, Starbucks, Pinjans. <laughs> but I'm not here to talk about food and birds. I'm here to talk about mobility, and more specifically, about new mobility, its impact and importance. Today, we have fans and haters of new mobility service all around the world, and I don't blame those who judge it. Weird toy shaped vehicles are germinating from the street and spreading everywhere, like gremlins after the rain. <laughs> you remember them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Time chains, as well as consumer needs and demands. Keep that in mind. Mopeds, bikes, scooters. These services that were supposed to bring convenience have unfortunately for some cities started to become extremely inconvenient. But is there a solution? How can we solve the problems caused by new technologies? The response is simple, with newer technologies. But the most important stakeholders in this specific scenario are our parents, a.k.a. our cities. The problem is our childlike operators and our parental-like governments don't often speak the same language. It is a challenge to put a regulatory framework in place that adapts to the pace of the constantly innovating mobility sector. And getting this right is crucial for innovative mobility service to enter the market and for cities and citizens to benefit from this rather than just suffering from the disruption of it. Today, regulations don't follow the speed of innovation, and cities are struggling to understand the market and take control of the situation. Parents, here is a question we all know very well. Allow or not to allow? That's the question. But here's what's tricky. How can you allow something that you don't understand? Where are these vehicles being placed and who are using them? What are the benefits and even scarier? What are the dangers? It is time for cities to get smarter and take control back. Disruptors want to innovate. Cities want to follow the rules, but why it is so important to encourage our children? Dudes, your kids can make you rich. <laughs> the smart city concept has the potential to boost economic development in global cities by over 5% and deliver at least $20 trillion in additional economic benefits by 2026. Data is essential to enable decision makers to plan, build, and maintain their mobility ecosystems in a better way. Transparency is a must-have when it comes to optimization, and mobility produces a huge amount of data every single second. And it's not only important to provide this overview to cities. Mobility is one of the key drivers of economies around the world. If you increase efficiency and quality of its mobility service, you are automatically impacting the economy and quality of life of its citizens. Imagine how smart cities would be if they had real-time data of their public service summoned to private operators and individuals, or by integrating even more data, such as traffic violation, air quality, and pollution. We have a lot of discussions going on around data privacy today, and yes, we must be careful with the way we use it. But data is far from being a villain. Mobility data is one of the 
key drivers of economies around the world. Now, imagine if cities could have access to their data and have the chance to plan, build, and maintain their mobility ecosystem based on facts. For cities or parents, this solution is not to say no right away or stop them. Cities and parents must understand that the world is constantly changing and it's important to adapt too. We have so much to learn from these crazy, audacious and inspiring innovators. Our children, they are the ones who will change the world. And if you are smart, you will try to get closer and learn from them as much as you can. Cities, it is time to take care of your kids. You are going to love them, I promise you. But it's your responsibility to check they are going well at school. If they are parking their vehicles in the right zone. If they are treating their colleagues well. And if it's necessary, you must recognize that you are wrong and adjust your own rules. You are responsible for setting up their tone of voice, the way how they deal with the world around them, and of course, you should punish them if necessary, but also cheer when they succeed, because their success is your success. And if you understand them and do your job well, you will see that their actions will be an extension of yourself and a great way to spread your own values to all of your citizens. As we are all part of our cities, in some way, we are all parents here today. New mobility represents change, it is different, radical, and it challenges everything that we know and that we understand. It is like seeing your kids wearing ripped jeans and listening to dubsteps. Yes, it is weird, but it can also represent change for the better. This kind of service will accelerate the transition to sustainable mobility and impact urban lives in generations to come. The speed of impact in the future is directly related to the decisions that we take today. And to make sure that we are ready to impact the world in a positive and efficient way, we must ask ourselves, are we the kind of parents that restrict our children so they become carbon cutouts of who we are? Or are we the kind of parents that encourage our children so they become better versions of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>